after having viewed that lovely little show there at the at the theater, the two of you return back to your offices and you arrive at your front doorstep. The door appears to be closed and still locked from when you left. Oh, so we did have a key. Or did you not have a key? I don't know. Did you we? tell oh, me. Okay. I guess you didn't because it wasn't really locked. I was just going to give you that, but <laughs> no. You get back and the door's closed. Okay. Uh, Xander will open it and check inside. Many dead right. bodies. You poke your head in and the foyer appears to be clear. Clear of bodies. No bodies here. Okay. Not a single that's, body to be found. That's a good sign. Perhaps they were mm-hmm. considerate and uh, put it in the main area. Like last time? Yes. Okay. We shall see. <laughs> the arrow keys are over here. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Teamwork makes the dream work. Mm-hmm. Oh, I believe these doors are locked. Yeah, I I think I thought I unlocked it when I came through here. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Huh. Well, you make your way into the main area of the first floor and uh, you can see from where you are that the area is clear of bodies. <laughs> it looks as much as you left it. Uh, Stavik is still locked up in the cell to the west busying himself with some menial task probably reading now I know this is a player but did Bastion end up watching Stavik uh you do not see Bastion down here but you do see that there is a quill pen that is fluttering over a piece of paper okay Whoa. Uh, on, the, on the table to your west Uh, the quill pen is writing he is still sitting there 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 over and over again okay scanning through the probably several pages that (laughs) have this are there any changes or is it that throughout Uh, he looked up was one Mm. he turned a page is another and it's interspersed every so often, but it's mostly just like a running constant, uh, uh, a running constant behavioral script of what Stavik has been up to for probably hours. Hmm. Dot, are you unable to hear and perceive things that happen on the second floor and roof? The quill pin stops. Another quill pen picks up another table or, uh, near you and writes down, I was specifically forbade from viewing or interacting with the second floor. Hmm. By who? It writes again, by the previous master. Understood. Does this apply to the roof as well, or is it just the second floor specifically? Uh, It writes, I have never been able to view the roof. Hmm. So it's only inside? It's only inside. Okay. Um, The quill pen lays down, and the writing is completely ceased, by the way. Is the previous master currently in the building? No. That was worth a try. And the quill pen lays down. All all writing has ceased. How many people are in the office right now? Uh, it writes down six and one half. So it still counts the upstairs as the office then? I just can't listen into it. Okay. <sighs> Should I ask about the one half? If you'd like, I suppose. I'm just so curious. What is the one half, Dot? 
I was told to count myself as half a person. Oh. Okay. Who told you to count yourself as half a person? The previous master. You can count yourself as a whole person, Dot. Yeah, yeah, you can be a whole person, Dot. I do not understand, but I will adjust. There are seven people in this house. Huh. Can you let us know if there are any other halves, though, whenever we are entering or exiting or, or just in the office? Certainly. Thank you, Dot. You're still the magnificent, pen. by the way. The pen lays down. All writing ceases. Okay. That answers that question, at least. Hmm. Xander is going to look at the cell. Are there any balled up pieces of parchment or anything on the floor? No. Not that you can see. Okay. Hmm. Well, any other pressing questions to ask our darling assistant? Are you happy? I do not understand the question. Yeah, that would try. Would you, on a scale of 1 to 10, rate your satisfaction with your job? 10. Hmm. Hmm. We should. Uh, Is 10 good or bad? You. I suppose that's a good question. Is 10 good or bad, Dot? I am satisfied with my duties here. Okay. Yes, we should uh, perhaps when. Lady Dupree comes tomorrow. We can let her know that that's something she can add. Testimonials. Yeah. 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 Yes. Satisfied. Mm hmm. All right. In that case. Please keep uh, a record of what Stavik does all night as you were when we entered, please. Very well. That pen lays down. Another pen picks back up with the other paper and writes down, he's still sitting there. And then we'll continue <laughs> as it goes. Okay. Excellent. Wonderful. Shall we head upstairs? Yes. Okay. And Xander will lead the way up the stairs. All right. Two of you head upstairs. I was thinking of uh, checking in on bro really oh, quick. Oh, do you want to do that alone? Do you want to join me in checking up on bro? I had uh, a follow up to our conversation before, oh, but Oh, I don't I don't want to be an inconvenience. So, it's it's fine. Uh, you're not an inconvenience dude. Do, do you have something that you want to say to bro? Um, no, but I could um, I, I'm fine with either being there or not being there, I guess. All right. I suppose I will talk to him on my own then. Okay. That's fine. I'm going to play piano while you're doing that. Okay. And Xander is going to head to his room really quick to grab some stuff. And then once he's done that, he's going to pause for a little bit to listen to what Louis is playing. So you you can hear, if your door is open, you can hear the mm -hmm. lid of the piano get opened. Um, there's kind of the, the scales start to get played. And then ever so slowly you start to hear him play one of the songs from the opera. Oh, that's really cute with mistakes, right? Uh, there's always mistakes, especially on the uh, higher <laughs> notes. Mm. Okay. Xander is going to smile a little bit. And he's going to leave his room and very quietly close the door to not disrupt Louis and his playing too much. You see him turn his head just ever so slightly to like look at you, but he keeps playing. Uh, Xander is going to do a little finger wave as he moves up to Bro's door and knocks on it. 
you knock on Bastion's door. Uh, just to remind you, it is pretty late at night. Uh, I want to say it's probably close to midnight, actually. I think it might be like 12 or, or 1 a.m. probably. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. you knock on the door and you hear a muffled sound in the distance. What? What is it? I don't know if that came through at all. A little bit. It did. A little bit. Okay, per good. <laughs> then it was successful. Xander is going to pause for about a minute to see if there is any follow-up to that. <laughs> there is um, the sound of someone slumping out of bed and then you hear a few footsteps and the door opens and standing there is Bastion in his night clothes, which basically is just sort of a long white shirt that mm. goes down to like mid thigh. Okay. Oh, I am he, very sorry, bro. His his eyes are somewhat bloodshot, and he's kind of hunched forward just a little bit. Yeah, what's up? Did you, something happen? No. Was there I, another killing? I just or did you need need somebody to get stabbed. <laughs> he's gonna pat Ooh. bro on the shoulder. No, I just oh. wanted to check in on you and make sure that you were doing all right. Hi, Bastion. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, bro. Uh, Still plinking on the which, piano. Which time is it? Uh, I think it might be midnight. We just got back from the uh, performance. Oh, oh, a bunch of like hoity-toity nobles, like playing pretend yeah okay cool um that's, that's great <clears throat> yes uh, all right what's um what can i do for you uh, feel free to go back to bed i didn't mean to distract you i just wanted to and he's going to pull from behind his back uh, a small bouquet of flowers they are a light orange with some spots of yellow they appear to be honeysuckle huh uh, what are cool? He he reaches forward and takes them from you. Smells them. Uh, it's that's nice. Um, what what's this about? Well, I just saw that you had some flowers in your room, and uh, I thought that these would look good arranged with those oh. other flowers. But it's Thanks. it's very late. We can talk about this another time perhaps in the morning when you're a little better rested sure uh, that, that works for me is there is there anything else um that you need from me like anything else i can like help you with or was is... it just to, to give me flowers and tell me that you had flowers I, I mean, I honestly just wanted to give you the flowers and talk a little bit, but if that is... No, I'm, I'm cool to talk. I'm, I'm, I'm up. I'm up. He, like, shakes his body and kind of straightens his back up a little bit. He's like, I'm, I'm awake now. Um, what's... Here, you can step in here. And he walks over to his table, and he puts the orange and yellow flecked flowers... He starts placing them into the vases here on the south part of his room. Uh, uh, Xander, please please feel free to make a perception check. I want to see if you recognize something about these flowers. Okay, I will do that for you. Ooh, what do we got? What do we got? That is... That is a nat 20. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. So what you recognize is uh, pretty simple, and that is that the it, it does look like this specific shade of flower uh, is very noticeable, uh, it, or rather familiar. It, it looks like he went out of his way to get the specific shade of purple that is uh, the streak of color in Louis' hair. Hmm. So, he, uh, he starts putting these down, like, interspersing them through the two 
to put so it's now like purples and then every so often there's like a an orange yellow flower to kind of break up the color mm. they look nice together hey. oh thanks yeah they it's good colors mm. did you buy these yourself oh yeah there's like a kind of like a, a, a flower shop actually just up the road um and they were cheap like they had a sale going on so i just i threw down a couple coppers and yeah it's good stuff hmm i didn't realize you were interested in flowers oh it's just like a nice way to get some color into the room because like you know if you're just in a room with just bare walls and shit like <laughs> i've done that enough trust me like when you when you have nothing for a long time and you just like in a room with just bare walls it can kind of drive you crazy so i like having a little bit of color just to kind of add a little bit of life to a place for sure that makes a lot of sense mm. yeah and just something about this color i kind of liked hmm yes i i understand well, I hope you like the combination. I don't know if you know much about honeysuckle. Uh, you can eat it, right? Yes. Uh, it's been used in a lot of different cultures for <clears throat> various reasons. There are some medicinal uses to it. There is also a fair bit of superstition associated with it as well. In hmm. some places, they put it outside homes because it's said that evil spirits and such cannot come in when you adorn your doors with them, so that could be potentially useful if Stavik ever decides to barge into your room, perhaps. <laughs> but, yeah. They're associated with fidelity, trust, companionship, love in some instances, and I believe... There's an old wives' tale from Dareham that young maidens shouldn't have honeysuckle in their rooms because the sweet aroma will attract all sorts of lurid and suggestive dreams that would be improper for them. So hopefully it brings you pleasant sleep as well. <laughs> hey. Nice. Yeah. But yes, I suppose I saw them earlier while I was shopping around for flowers and I guess they just reminded me of you a little hey if, if a smut flower reminds you of me I'll take it well like you said they are considered to be quite attractive to a lot of animals because of their smell and because they're edible I've hmm. never had the pleasure myself but I would like oh, to okay. try someday and he'll he picks one out and hands it to you. Here. I mean, there's plenty here. You may as well try this one. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Xander is going to try and take some of the nectar and taste it. Okay. Uh, Bastion will do the same. He'll take another one out. Smell it. He, and then he kind of picks the flower out and then puts it in his mouth and kind of sucks on it. Yeah, it's kind of got, like, just a little bit of, like, a little pop of sweetness there, huh? Hmm. Yeah. It's it's kind of like sugar water. Yeah, I suppose it is. He's going to, like, lick his finger, kind of give Bastion a, a, a once-over, and say, hmm, yes, quite fond of it. Pretty cool. Hmm. So, uh... Thanks for the, the flowers. Um, so what do you think about anything else as far as, like, what's been going on? Should we... Do we have, like, a plan for what we do next? Well, aside from talking to Lady Dupree and, I suppose, checking in on that one body that was identified we don't really have a clear plan of action moving forward unless I suppose we interrogate Stavik some more and then mm -hmm. a look of concern is going to cr 
across Xander's features as he ponders something. He looks a little uncertain, which is probably not a usual expression that crosses his face. Bastion kind of like cues in on this and leans in a little bit. Everything all right, Zando? Well, I'm just thinking about something that happened when I was with Detlov. Okay, like what? We were doing some arts and crafts together. (laughs) He thought it would be a fun activity. And we had talked a little bit about Stavik and his condition, as it were. And Detlev made a statue of me. The librarian made made a statue of you, okay? Yes, yes, yeah. we were making yeah. some, some art for each other. I made him a, a bird with a hat. Not a very good one, but okay. I tried my best. And he's going to reach into his pouch, uh, or his bag, rather, and he's going to pull out the eight-inch tall statue of himself holding the book and the dagger that he stabbed himself with, and he will put it down on the table in between the flowers. Dang. Bastion will, like, lean... That's another nat 20. (laughs) Uh, The door is open, so I'm just wondering how much Louis can hear. That's all. You hear every word. Okay, cool. Those are both nat 20s. I mean, honestly, I don't know what's going on, but the the last three rolls have been nat 20s. (laughs) The last three? Yeah, the last three rolls. Oh. You, don't, worry, don't worry about the other one. Okay. <laughs> I'm just rolling. I mean, it's just some 20s, 20s, 20s. So already this is pretty wild. The, the, the mathematical likelihood is pretty slim of what we just did. <laughs> it's uh, one in 8,000. If anybody's checking the odds. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, um, Bastion takes a look at the uh, statue and leans down and, like, really kind of takes it in. Damn, like, apparently librarians are good at making statues. Like, this is pretty accurate. He's really good with his hands, apparently. You may have some competition. (laughs) Well, we'll see. I mean, I don't know how good he is at stabbing people, so I think that I might not have too much competition. Hmm. I mean, I don't want to, I don't know, I don't want to, like, get competitive with him, because then, like, then I might, like, hurt him, and then Louis would be upset, because, like, I don't want to hurt Louis' friends. Of course, of course. But I think you have many talents other than just stabbing people in the kidneys. Oh, shucks. I mean, you're probably right. But I definitely am. I don't know. It's kind of like what I feel that I'm really decent at, at least. It's a marketable skill, you know? Mm. I suppose. I suppose. But hey, um, what, uh... So, okay, so we, we... Think that this has to do with the killer somehow, or...? Xander's gonna slowly close the door behind him. And he's going to cross his arms and look at the small statue. And he's going to point out the book in the one arm and the dagger in the other. This is that book that Louis read from the library, the one that Stavik asked permission to read, the one that he apparently wrote. Oh, okay. And you're holding it, and you're also holding that same dagger that you, like, did that ritual with. Yes. Okay. Which I'm concerned about, because Detlev informed me, and he swallows slowly, that apparently this dagger was once wielded by a mortal vessel of Owen, but it's been lost, apparently, to time. 
Weird. Okay. Right. That's uh, that's pretty messed up. Like, but like, what does that, what does that mean? Just. Stavik really wanted to recreate that book. He says he can't remember what was in it. Yeah. He also said he wanted to be the one to make the sacrifice in that temple. And I will admit, though I have the ability to do divination, I wasn't actually sure what would happen. I knew that there was knowledge to be gained in that temple, and I knew that there was something that would be dangerous if it fell into the wrong hands. And with Valentino calling in who knows who, I was worried. And so, under the circumstances, I felt like there weren't really many options. So. I did what I had to, and I'm not fully sure what the consequences are yet, but I've been feeling strange since that happened, and I think the dagger hurt me. Perhaps that's strange to say, I mean, it did make me bleed, but... It's pretty heavy. Like, what do you mean? Like, because, like, I don't really, like, understand all this magic and ritual stuff, so, like, what, what can I do to help? I suppose there isn't really anything in particular that I, I'm asking you to do more so I just haven't really spoken to anybody about this aside from Detlev and Detlev making this bust of me with these two items in his hand and Stavik being as suspicious and wrapped up in this murder investigation as he is it feels like there is a connection there and I with all my divination ability I'm not able to put the pieces together but I suppose I'm just concerned about what this could all mean and with what happened to me the other day and the fact that I feel hurt sick perhaps damaged somehow I feel like It may have something to do with this dagger. It may have something to do with Stavik and what he's been doing. If he's the killer, he really wanted to go down there to investigate on that first day that we found the temple. I'm not sure if this was all part of his plan or if he's just really, really, really foolish and it's all a coincidence, but I don't really believe in coincidences, so I suppose I just since you mentioned that it was good to not keep secrets I thought that I would share something with you that I haven't really shared with anyone else yet Thanks, Sandel that, that means a lot um He's, I mean, if there's anything I can do to help you, like, figure this stuff out, just let me know, okay? Okay. I appreciate it. I mostly just wanted to get that off my chest. So, you've already done a lot. And he'll give him a smile. Thanks. And, uh, and thanks for the flowers. They're, they're pretty color. Of course. I... And then he shakes his head. Uh, he's going to take the statue and he'll put it back in his bag. Is there anything I can do for you while I'm still here? Uh, no, I mean, I think you've, you've done a lot. I mean, is there anything 
that you need. Uh, anything I can I can help you do? I, I don't know. I don't know. Like sometimes I feel like my words don't really like do enough. So like I, I'm kind of like a person of like action. So like if there's kind of any any anything you need done. He'll walk up to Bro, and he's going to give him a big hug. Returns the hug. Wraps arms around you. Gives you a good squeeze. Mm -hmm. Well. Hey, I, I know this has really been stressful on everybody, so, like, if there's, you know, if there's anything I can help you with, or if you have any, like, ideas for leads or anything like that, you can come to me and I'll help you. Okay. Thank you. Especially, if, like, if you need to keep it away from the rest of the group for some reason. Like, if you need to trust somebody, I'm here for you. Okay. Thank you. Because, like, right now it seems like Stavix may be, like, the killer or, like, killer adjacent somehow. Yeah. So, like, that's weird, right? Indeed. I really appreciate that. And if there's anything about the case that you feel like might not be a good idea to share with the others feel free to tell me and if there's anything just personally you need done and you don't want anyone asking too many questions about feel free to let me know <laughs> hey thanks um i do only have like one concern and that's like if it is stavik i'm not sure if i can like i can't stab him in the kidney because he doesn't have one so Hmm. I'll have to figure out some other way to mess him up for us. Well, I'll use my divination and figure out the the weak points in those bones and let you know <laughs> so you can stab them just fine. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> He'll step back and uh, just look Bro over one more time as he kind of makes his way back to the door. I don't mm. want to disturb you too much. I, I've already kept you up so long, so... Hey, it's all good. Just uh, take care of yourself, and I'll see you in the morning, okay? Okay. He'll open Bro's door, and as he heads out, he's going to pause for a moment, duck his head back in, and turn to Bro and say, By the way, those flowers and he's going to yeah. point to the orange ones that was me flirting and he'll head out and close the door behind him Bastion's eyes going to get wide and you close the door Louis stopped playing when he heard that <laughs> you just see him sitting at the piano with his hands hovering over the keys And he just closes the lid and stands up. All done? He'll give him a thumbs up. Okie dokie. So, um, what was that about? Uh, what was, what about? The, the flirting with the flowers. So you were listening in on the conversation? I mean, you were talking loud enough. I don't think we were talking that loud, Louis. Then I guess I have good ears. Okay. I suppose you do. I'm not quite clear exactly what you mean by what was that about. Don't worry about it, then. Hmm. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to do today? We kind of... just stares at Xander. Xander is going to like turn very slightly to look back at Bastion's door. He'll smile a little bit and then turn back to Louis and say why don't we do some arts and crafts? Oh, okay, sure. What are you thinking? Well, I played a, a game with Detlov earlier and I was wondering if you might be interested in some sculpting, painting, something like that. I haven't painted in a long while, but sure, I'd, I'd be happy to. I don't know if I'm still good at it. Well, 
Mm. Would you like to do it in your room or my room? Mine. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll lead the way. And Louis will go and open up the door to his room and uh, step aside to allow Xander in first. Thank you. And he'll go in and he stares at the door for a really, really long time before deciding to close it. All right. And he pulls out some chairs and sets them up. Um... Okay, so how do you want to do this? Do you want me to set up a still life? Do you want me to have have something set up at all for painting? Or, or are you going to be painting? Or So uh, we're going to start with something that's not painting, but we will get to painting afterwards. Okay. Um, do you mind if I pull your desk over here? No, not at all. You can just move the stuff onto the ground for all I care. Uh, Xander will move over to Louis' desk and just begin dragging it towards the middle of the room. Uh, on the desk, there is several pages laid out and you just see so many lines crossed out in ink over and over again. Um, just pages and pages of it and a bunch of crumpled pieces of paper too. Any. He he goes over to help. He's not much help, but you can see him like slowly moving the papers onto the ground. <laughs> Sander is like looking away as he's pulling the desk. <laughs> Just, okay, there we are. Mm -hmm. All right, what are we doing with the desk? Well, he'll move one chair to one side and one chair to the other. So this is a little game where we create something. Okay. And we're going to be creating something without any particular intention in mind. I know it seems like from your drawings, there's very clear intent behind them, though I can't say what that is. But this is an activity to sort of clear your mind a little and just to see what happens, what takes shape when you're not really paying too much attention. Okay, sure. And he's going to reach into his bag and he's going to pull out uh, a bunch of clay and lots of different kinds of uh, inks and dyes. Mm -hmm. And he'll say, when I did this with Detlev, I actually did it with my eyes closed, which is why Junior uh, perhaps does not look quite up to snuff compared to what Detlev made for me. But you can do this with your eyes closed or your eyes open. Um, I can, I can try it with my eyes closed. If you'd like. You uh, just have to promise to stay where you are when we're sitting at the desk. All right. Uh, unless my stomach is twisted in impossible ways and I have to lean over to throw up some blood, I <laughs> will stay still. Okay. Then... I will do this with my eyes closed. All right. Uh, Sander will hand over a chunk of clay. He'll pick uh, a little chunk of clay for himself as well. Uh, I'll be closing my eyes too. Okay. And he'll get to work just doing whatever yeah. feels right. Louis just pulls like a, a big enough chunk, um, kind of looks at it for a second. He moves it around and then he closes his eyes and he just starts going with whatever feels right. Uh, with his eyes closed, but he's trying not to think about it, which is really hard for him because his brain keeps going and going and going. <laughs> but then in that instance, he starts just focusing on whatever his brain is going on and not really worrying about what his hands are doing. After about 30 seconds, Xander is going to, uh, perhaps knowing Louis a little bit and the way his brain seems to work, he is going to pipe up and say, so would you like to clarify your question from earlier about uh, the flirting? Oh, I uh, already forgot about it. Um, okay. Just, 
I, I did not realize you had feelings for Bastion. Uh, feelings? Well, if you're flirting, doesn't that mean you have feelings for someone? Right? I suppose that is one way to interpret that. Is it not? <laughs> you see his hands just stop? <laughs> well, you can flirt with people that you have feelings for, but you can also flirt with people that you don't have feelings for. Well, what's the point of that, then? Well, what is, what is the point of flirting in general, Louis? I mean, usually to let someone know that you like them, like, yes. romantically. Yes. That is one way that you may flirt. But there are many different kinds of feelings, and sometimes people flirt for no reason in particular. Not saying that I was flirting with bro for no reason in particular, but I'm just saying that flirting doesn't necessarily mean you have romantic intent towards someone. Okay, I apologize. Do you have romantic intent towards Bastion? No, thank you for the clarifying question, Louis. Uh. I suppose I would answer that question with I don't know. <laughs> You're so weird. How am I weird? You're just always so weird. I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, I retract my I don't know. <laughs> what? You can't just retract it. You've already said it. It's already out in the world. You've spoken it into existence. You're right. I suppose I did speak that I don't know into existence. It's just we had a conversation earlier, and he thought I was flirting with him, and I clarified that I wasn't flirting mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this time, I wanted to make it clear that I suppose I was flirting with him when I did that thing. His eye, I, I don't know if Xander ever opened his no, eyes his again. Eyes no, his eyes are closed perfect. the entire time. Okay. <laughs> Louis literally moves his head, though, while he's talking, like, almost in gesture with the tonation. Mm -hmm. Um, well, okay. So, <laughs> do you have romantic feelings towards Bastion, then? Didn't you just ask me this question, Louis? I'm sorry, I was just, I, I really didn't understand past that. Like, <laughs> I just don't get it. <laughs> what, what don't you get? No, never mind, it's a dumb question. I, let's move on. If you're sure, I suppose some, sometimes feelings are not very clear, and uh -huh. you understand feelings more the more you explore them. Okay. And so I suppose... You're just exploring Bastion? <laughs> <laughs> well... Not yet, I would say. Ooh. And okay. that was the intent, perhaps, of... Okay. Xander just puts his face in his hands. <laughs> he clay-ass hands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You just hear Louis giggling at the other side of the table. I don't understand what is so funny about the situation, Louis. <laughs> no, nah, it's cool. Xander is just gonna pick Clay off his <laughs> face and continue. Um, yeah, I, from time to time, Louis does like itch his face with like the sides of his palms. It's still smearing Clay on his face though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, what kind of Clay was this, by the way? Mm. Terracotta, porcelain, stoneware? It was terracotta. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Extra red. Extra mm. messy. Extra red and extra messy. <laughs> it's just like Sander. <laughs> okay. Uh, I apologize for asking that question earlier then, I guess. Oh, why, why are you apologizing? Well, you brought it up, so I thought maybe it bothered you. No, it didn't bother me. I just figured that this activity is best done when you're not thinking about what you are doing and uh. knowing how you have reacted in the past in certain situations. I figured you would have a hard time, perhaps, not thinking about the fact that you were doing this thing, so I wanted to distract you with something. Well, I... Okay, that's kind of nice, I guess. 
then <laughs> and he, he stops molding for a little bit. Can you ask me more questions now that I'm thinking again? All right. Uh, or, or say something. What I don't words know. would you use to describe debt love? Oh, um... How many words? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, I think he's a very comforting presence. I think that I look up to him, so he's admirable. I think he's sort of guardian or parental in my life. Um, I don't know. He's he's always been there, so well, not always. It's just I've I've known him since I was little, so it it's hard to say, I guess. I see. And to clarify, now that you have provided so much clarification on the situation with Bastion. Do you believe that I have romantic feelings for Detlev as well? Um, he stops sculpting. <laughs> uh, well, it, it's just, it, it seems like everyone, a lot of people um, that you're around, you, you just, you just seem like uh, one of those people that, um, you know... Uh, one of those people who... Just, like, flirts with everyone, you know, and, and like, has romantic feelings for everyone, and, like, there's nothing wrong with that or anything. It's just, like, you know, you just, you just kind of seem like you want to be romantically invested with like every person it seems like like with Val and, and Detlev and, and now Bastion I guess oh so Xander is pausing as he is just considering this information that Louis has just bestowed upon him I seem like a person who wants to be romantically involved with everyone like, a lot of people, at least. Like, you just... A, a lot of... Multiple people. Yeah. Yes. So I, I seem like a person who just forms attachments very easily. Um, no. No, at the same time. I, I don't know if... Uh, it's, it's hard to say. Um, I know you said no judgment, but I feel like when people usually talk about people who no it's, flirt it's with just a lot like people, i'm just not used to like guys liking guys it's um no wait that's um oh um i'm sorry why are you apologizing louis i Ed, you're not supposed to talk about that, so it, it just seems rude. Guys liking guys, or the fact that you aren't used to guys liking guys? No, Didn't you say I, that Lorenzo also mentioned liking men? Yep. Hmm. I see. Did you think that was perhaps strange? I mean, I mean, I know it happens, obviously. I see. Um, I just, I, um, I, I don't know. I feel like you're not supposed to bring it up normally, right? Well, I don't know where this supposed to is coming from. I, I don't know. It just, I. Uh... I mean, I feel like ta usually talking about any sort of like relationships, it, it's it's like um. This topic talks about his wife all the time. Yeah, it's fucking annoying. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I suppose so. And he doesn't actually talk about her that much, to be mm. honest. I suppose not. Like, if anything, I feel like he's pretty cagey about his wife, which is also in itself annoying. Was was that a joke? Because if so, it's a little funny. <laughs> 
Can we pretend it was a joke? Yes, I will <laughs> pretend that it's a joke. But circling back, Bastion talks about being attracted to women. Yeah, and it's gross. A lot. And Valentino also talks about being attracted to people. They are both people. disgusting people. Oh. <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> he just keeps sculpting. D- does that make me disgusting as well? N- no, it's you don't say it in that way. You know? I see. But if I supposedly want to be romantically involved with Valentino and Bastion, then doesn't that reflect on me? What, what do you mean? Well, you said that they're disgusting people, and well, you said no, that it you, seems I like... I mean, I, like, you don't, you don't talk that way. It's... Yes, but I, in your mind, perhaps want to be romantically involved with them, so that uh-huh. means I want to be romantically involved with disgusting people, as per Louis. So, doesn't that reflect on me, then? <laughs> you don't feel the table moving at all. <laughs> Like there's no movement on his side. Uh, I'm, I'm really sorry. I shouldn't have spoken out of turn. Um, this isn't a judgment statement whatsoever. I'm honestly more amused than anything. I mean, they're kind of gross. So, I should avoid romantic entanglements with Valentina that and Bastion. That is your mo, and you can do whoever you want. Um. Oh. Okay. It's, you know what? Uh, You're talking about this relatively freely for someone who said that uh, it's something that should be avoided in conversation. Well, we're all, you are the one asking questions. Well, uh, you asked me to ask questions, and perhaps these sorts of conversations should be normalized. Oh, okay. Cool. Yes. Perhaps the reason why... Lorenzo brought it up to you in confidence is because those sorts of conversations aren't normalized and he felt like it was something to keep close to the vest, though you did share that information with me. You... But... Wait. I thought it was normal here. Well, I... I, I mean, he spoke that it wasn't, like, super normal, but it's not, like, the worst thing ever. Like, it's not like, um... He said Daraham was really bad. Hmm. Yes, well, I I suppose my point is it wouldn't even really be a topic of conversation if it was just spoken about so freely that it was normal. You wouldn't refer to it as that. Um... (laughs) You feel the table moving, but it's more so the legs of the table (laughs) as, like, Louis just kind of hitting one with his foot. He, he has stopped sculpting at this point. Um, I just... It's... I don't, I don't know. I, I don't even know what the question is anymore. Well, I mean, I wasn't really asking for the sake of gaining information necessarily. I was asking because you asked me to ask you something. Yeah. But to clarify, I did not go to Detlev today with the intention of doing him as you so cleverly (sighs) mentioned just now. Or being Uh done by him, I suppose, since, you know. What do I know? Well, I suppose you don't know. Actually, uh, <laughs> Louis is considering smushing his project currently. <laughs> what? What don't I know, Sander? Yeah. Do you want to talk about it, or would this also be a taboo subject? We can talk about it, but can we promise not to tell anyone else, please? Sure. I promise I will not talk to anybody else about this uh, particular conversation. Thank you. Well, what do you mean by doing Uh, someone? uh, Oh, God. Well, generally speaking, there there are lots of um, different modalities, one might say, but 
traditionally when someone is talking about doing, there is a doer and there is a person who is being done. And so that is what I was referring to. I was just saying that there is a hypothetical scenario in which I was not intending I... to do Detlev, but Detlev would be the doer. Um, I, I apologize for being so crass with my language. No, not at all. I was just simply making sure that there weren't any particular assumptions about the particular modalities or orientations of our interactions. I, I used a shorthand term to mean a multitude of things. Oh, I see. And that's on me. Mm -hmm. I, uh, uh... So. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Mm-hmm. Discomfort is real. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling quite comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I guess uh, at first I was just implying that, like, it, it. Well, he did, I suppose, keep asking if I wanted to stay over. So perhaps he thought that I wanted to, but that doesn't really make sense. You feel Louis make a sharp kick against the table. <laughs> oh, is, <laughs> is everything all right, Louis? Yep, everything's great. You know that would be sort of fraternization, right? Uh, what, what do you mean? Well, you know, we're both librarians, so... You're what? A librarian? Though I generally use the term archivist. Shit. I thought you already knew this, Louis. Uh, about you? Yes. No. Well, I, I did tell you that I wanted to show you a library someday that I didn't know if I could show you said library, but I was looking forward to potentially one day showing you the library, one of the greatest libraries. And given that you knew Detlev and you mentioned the game so openly and talked about a lot of very particular things, and since you had access to that book, I had figured that you had perhaps intuited from all of the context clues and my interest in Detlev and wanting to spend private time with him that I... wanted to do him, apparently. I am so sorry. Why are you I've apologizing? I've been a dick all night. Oh? I... I mean, I, I already told you I thought you were gonna take him away from me and that, like, maybe... Maybe you were becoming his new favorite thing and I um mm -hmm. I uh uh I am very sorry. You don't need to No, I absolutely do. Well then I suppose I accept your apology and can assure you that I do not believe that I am Detlev's new favorite thing, or will ever be his new favorite thing. So, okay. uh, rest assured, it was mostly a work talk, I suppose you could say. Am I allowed to open my eyes yet? Uh, have you finished creating? I have no idea. I've just kind of been mushing clay around at this point. Well, I suppose my next question is, are you prepared 
to witness whatever you have created? Are you prepared for this to be your creation? Or would you like to keep creating? You must take responsibility for what you create after all, so... It's quite a heavy responsibility. Okay. Well, the, the thing I want to say to you, I would rather be looking at you to say it. Um, then open your eyes. Okay. And Louis will open his eyes and look down at whatever he's made. Xander will also do the same, looking down at what Louis has made first. What did I make? Oh, I'm supposed to answer this for you? Yes. <laughs> Well, you said you were just mushing clay around in a big clump, so... <laughs> well, no! I mean, <laughs> you're so rude. Look, that's this what is what said. Xander... This is what Xander did with... Uh, that's mm. Louis's perception of things. Okay, okay. You, Xander did this with Detlev. I want to know what Louis made. Excellent question. Uh, so I think Louis kind of smushed together a, a, a very odd lump of clay, but it's, it's kind of, if you tilt your head at the right angle, it looks like it could be a butterfly. Hmm. It's, it's roughly symmetrical and it kind of has a blob on this side and a blob on this side that could be wings. And then it has like a little nub at the top and bottom that could be like a head and, a, and like a, a butt. <laughs> so you, you think you think it could be potentially a butterfly? Okay. okay. Could use some work, but sure. it's close. Uh, I've got one hand to work on this. Okay, I'm trying my best. No, <laughs> I mean that's about as good as my bird with a hat. So. What did Z what did Xander sculpt? <laughs> Do this one too? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, Xander, you sculpted a ring. Okay. Like like a hand ring or like it's a little big to fit on a hand but yeah something like that okay is it like uh just like a solid band does it have like a stone in it just like a solid band yeah okay just like a you, you made like basically a donut out of clay okay <laughs> he looks at sanders should we have not stopped so early well, it's still malleable, so you can always improve upon it. Okay. Um, if you want to. Yeah. Uh, and and Louis will look Xander in the eyes if if Xander's looking back at him. Xander's looking at him. I don't need to use that spell anymore. I, I don't want to. That spell... Uh, I wanted to check your magic before you looked into my soul. Ah, yes. To For your peace of mind, I believe you said. I... I wanted to make sure you weren't lying and actually the, the gods were touching me in any way. I... I wanted to avoid that, and I've just, I, I've been lied to a lot, and I, I, uh, I didn't want you to lie to me, I guess. Hmm. So, but, um, I, I think what you just told me is plenty of peace of mind. Hmm. Yes, well, like I said to you, Louis, I... I'm very careful about the words that I use because I know that words have power and like I also said there usually isn't 
a reason to lie unless absolutely necessary and with the way that my magic works I don't like to put lies out into the world so but I, I do appreciate that he nods I um So then my only condition otherwise is just that I I do not wish to be lower than you whenever you do this. Sander is going to kick out the chair from under him and fall on the ground. Uh, Louis just stands up and like goes over to him. What, what? You didn't have to like land on the ground. I was gonna say like I could stand next to you or Sanders something. Sanders got his hands like crossed over his chest and he's just like looking up at Louis. It, he just leans over and just starts like slabbing in <laughs> his hands. Stop! Stop that! What? You, you look like you're in a coffin. Well, I I've never been in a coffin, so I would not would not know. But I suppose that was very. thoughtless of me. My apologies. Uh, <laughs> I just don't want you to look dead, because I'd, I'd rather it be that you stay alive, I guess. I see. Xander is going to do a little roll oh. so that he's on his stomach, and then he's going to look up at Louis. You look like a seal. I see. Well, is that a bad thing? <laughs> Louis just crouches down <laughs> next to Xander, just kind of like resting on his tippy toes, but he's he's got his legs together as he's looking over at him. Mm -hmm. Technically, no. Seals are really, really cool. I think they're quite adorable. Um, but with recent events, mm -hmm. I don't particularly recommend pretending to be a seal. That's fair. I do have freckles, I suppose, and I am... And he pulls a lock of hair behind his ear, very girly, with all the long hair and such. It okay, I... I'm sorry, okay? You don't need to apologize, Louis. I... I just... Maybe... I was, uh, jealous of your stature, and, um, then you also had all this other stuff on you, and then it, I, I got irritated for no reason, and it was all just because of preconceptual stuff, and I'm sorry. Well, my intent was not to drag an apology out of you, Louis. I was simply just teasing a friend, but if it would ease your mind, I do not harbor any negative feelings towards you, and I accept your apology, and will not make this joke in the future if it makes you uncomfortable. And he'll move and lay down in his stomach next to Xander and kind of prop his chin on his hands. Okay. I used to wear earrings too. Uh, before things happened. Yes. Hmm. I'm sure they looked lovely on you. Mm. They were never the kind I liked. I imagine not. Would you like to wear earrings again? Not really. Mm. Um, but that's just because I don't really like how jewelry looks on me. That would make sense. Um, though he taps his chest for a second. Though this one's this one's okay. Um, but uh, I 
I am a judgmental person and I am trying to work on it, but it is very hard with what the world does. That makes sense. The world encourages judgment. Well, I don't I don't know about that. <laughs> don't you? Um Not really that much. Hmm. I don't feel like I do, at least. I see. I suppose I just believe that judgment is a strategy, and in many cases a life-saving strategy. It's all about placing things into categories, using past experience to determine what the current experience will be like, and there are many ways in which judgment is helpful. The issue is just, as you've mentioned, when there are certain preconceived notions or biases, when things aren't equal, and those judgments are unfair, uncalled for, or cause more harm than they help. There are many ways in which judgment can be protective. And so I don't think judgment in and of itself is a bad thing, but I do think that the world in its broken state encourages judgment in a way that is often harmful rather than helpful. And it might not even be for a negative reason necessarily. It may just encourage that in the sense that it's a very dangerous and uncertain world we live in. And so that in and of itself encourages people to be as judgmental, as self-protective as possible. And that only makes the bonds between people weaker than they would be otherwise. That's how I look at it, at least. You're peculiar. Yes, I believe you've said that three or four times tonight. I must be on a particularly strong streak of peculiarity tonight. All of them have been good. I suppose so. Yes. I just, um... I suppose to say I appreciate your viewpoint and I am glad for it because there's only so much that books can teach me hmm. and I still have a lot to learn but you will learn a lot especially if you become a librarian someday okay I do really want to see that library. Well, depending on how things go, you may get a chance to. You know, that's why I approached you on that first night. I didn't know for sure, and I was suspicious of everyone. After all, the markings would likely have been caused by one of us. Probably. And yeah. You were the first person who had seen the body, so you were the most suspicious. Mm. And I suppose it's as Betlo said, sometimes you have to trust my uh, trust your gut. And I suppose my gut said that it was very risky, but also that I suppose I saw something just the way you interacted with the world, the way you talked about things, your magic. I just had a feeling 
from your inquisitive nature, I imagine, your genius intellect, yeah. the ability to see all layers of the mystery at once, pierce the souls of mortal men, <laughs> etc. I'm having a trouble with doing either, it seems. Well, I suppose I just thought, hmm, you would potentially make a good librarian. But that is a hard thing to do, obviously. Louis moves his head and just rests his forehead on Xander's shoulder, mostly covering his face with it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Would you like to suspend the arts and crafts and just uh, lay like this? Or would you like me to uh, look into your soul, as it were? Do you want to look into my soul? If that is possible, and it would be helpful, I think that it is something I'd like to try, at least. If I'm not mesmerized, like Clara. Um, and Louis will shift and sit up and go into a crisscross applesauce kind of sitting um, kind of his body's just turned towards Xander so Xander's laying down and Louis kind of mm -hmm. sitting next to him looking at him there is like one itsy bitsy worry I have sometimes um Yes, feel free to share. Well, I don't actually think this is real. It just seems to be a factor of my life. Um, yes. I just... Sometimes I feel like when people are around me, uh, their emotions become heightened or extreme, maybe. They, uh, I feel like people act really strangely around me no matter what I do, um, and I, I don't really want to cause that to you personally. Well, I can assure you that my emotions have not... He's going to pause as he considers that for a moment. I imagine that if it is the case that people's emotions become heightened around you, it's gonna kind of like look to the west, I suppose, just vaguely, and then look back at Louis. I suppose if that is the case, I can push past that if such a thing would affect me, but I believe for the most part, my emotions have been what they are and do not seem to have been largely affected by you if that is the case and it would be good to know okay it, it's just like I said I don't even think that's a real thing it's just it could be it would explain Clara's strangeness <laughs> she's just a girl yes I suppose so Penelope's just a girl too, and she's, she's rather a strange. Bitch. Sorry. <laughs> um, that was rude. Of well, me. I'm sorry. Why are you apologizing? I'm so sorry. Is, it was so rude. Is Penelope in the room with us? No. It was still rude. <laughs> you were just expressing your feelings, and she was quite rude with us, so... Yes. No harm she, is actually coming just, to anyone. She just reminded me of something, that's all. Mm. Well then, I hope you don't have to deal with her too much, or that if you do, perhaps she will actually... Never mind. I was gonna suggest that maybe your powers would 
dull her no, actually, negative qualities. More but, than likely, yes. it would just heighten whatever pissiness she already fucking has and just make it even fucking worse. Sorry. No need to apologize, Louis. Thank you for sharing that you feel that way. Um, but I just I don't I don't like women like her. Understandable. Well, uh, shall we try a little experiment? Sure. You promise it won't hurt. I cannot promise in the sense that I know exactly what will happen in the future with 100% certainty, but from my experience, this should not hurt. Okay. Um. Get out of the seal position. Come on. <laughs> Sander will get out of the seal position and sit, not crisscross applesauce as is the only legal way, but he will break some Bergie's laws. Illegal! And Illegal. fold his feet under him. Um, and Louis will switch to where he's on his knees and then he'll kind of sit up a little bit higher than Xander. S Xander will slump slightly for the first <laughs> time that you've ever seen to lower his head. <laughs> Shoulders raised slightly. Okay. What do we need to do? Mm, I believe you... I perhaps should look into my eyes. If that is uncomfortable for you, you don't need to, but I'll let you know. I can do it. Okay. And Louis will lean forward and touch his forehead to Xander's and just stare into his eyes. Okay. Xander is going to open his eyes fully and stare at Louis with intent. And... Beardy, I'd like to try and recreate what I did with Stavik. <laughs> See if it is possible to get any kind of read from Louis, potentially um, drawing from the first well if necessary. Okay. I would like you to make a wisdom test, please. A wisdom test. Okay. I can do that. Wisdom. That is a 19, I believe. Ooh. Excellent. Xander, you... You focus your power, and as you do, your eyes begin to sort of shimmer and sparkle in an otherworldly way, and you look deep into the heart of Louis. And what you see is... pain you see sadness you see a life that was spent trapped you see this jumble of negativity that looks like a knot inside of the core of the person sitting before you. Mm -hmm. But surrounding it is this halo of positivity, this light of, of hope that exists despite the pain that exists in the core of the person that you're, that you're looking at. Mm-hmm. You would also detect, throughout this, you would also detect their alignment. Uh, Louis is neutral good. Neutral good. Okay. Good. Perfect. Uh, Xander will just take it all in. And I believe, like, as he is doing this, his hand is just going to reflexively, like, move to his chest and grip the, the center where the diamond is a little tightly. 
Louis will just instinctively, his right hand goes on top of your hand. Mm -hmm. Xander doesn't seem to notice. Mm -hmm. Um, But as the light begins to fade from Xander's eyes, Louis will probably notice that they're uh, glistening slightly, as if moist with tears, potentially. He'll blink. And then look at Louis with a complicated mix of expressions on his face. Um, Louis will slowly move his forehead off of Xander's. Are, are you okay? Are you okay? Eh. Usually, sometimes, no. Mm. <laughs> All of the above. If we're taking a test. I see. Well, it was an experiment, not a test. And I suppose It the... wasn't a test? No. Oh, man. I was hoping I'd pass. Well, I suppose in a way it was an unexpected test. It was an experiment that provided results that could have been received through a formal testing process. So you did not actually take a test, but I suppose if you had taken a test, you would have passed, if that provides any solace or makes any sense. Okay. So I passed. Yes, (laughs) Louis, you passed the test. And he'll pat Xander's hand on his chest. Xander will kind of like look down and notice he's got his hand on his chest and that your hand is touching it and uh, raise an eyebrow slightly um, and look at Baloo with a smile. I didn't know if you were in pain, so I just wanted to comfort you, I guess. Sorry. Oh, no. Uh, No need to apologize. I suppose I just didn't notice. He'll just slowly take his hand back. But I appreciate it. And I'm sorry. What did you do? What did I do? You're apologizing. What, what What did you do? Oh, I looked into your soul. Oh, wh- why are you apologizing then? Because of what I saw, I suppose. Oh. It didn't hurt you, did it? You know... In some other places, the way that you respond to a negative question is different than in others. So I just wanted to know, does no to a negative question mean yes to the fact, or does it mean the opposite? Because uh, those are actually different responses. Um, uh, uh, I guess it depends on the question. <laughs> I see. So, for example, I believe like in, in some places in Quay, for example, if you if you say don't you want to talk to me the yes or the no is about the fact of you want to talk to me rather than the don't you but in other places if you're responding no it means no I do want to talk to you does that make sense okay yeah so I suppose when it didn't hurt did it I I am asking if looking at my soul hurt you I suppose it did in the sense that my heart hurts because of what I witnessed, which is why I was apologizing. Oh, um, may I ask what you did witness? Mm. If you're allowed to share. Uh, Xander is going to reach into the, the pouch Uh, that he put on the table and pull out a lump of clay and he's going to squeeze it and twist it up and he's going to put it on the ground in front of Louis and then he's going to take his ring that he made and he is going to put it down around it and then he's going to take a little bit of the black dye and he's going to 
drop a bunch of it onto the knot in the center, and he'll close his eyes, put his fingers to his lips, murmur something, and tap the ring, and as he does, it begins to glow with a golden light. And he'll gesture at it. It was sort of like this. It's not a completely visual sensation. It's more of an experience, but if I had to describe it, it was sort of like this. Well, um, I'm sorry you had to see the ugly part. I don't know that anything that I saw was ugly, Louis. He shrugs his one-armed half-shrug. Um. What about, like, Ring of Seekers for a group name, or, or um, something like that? Ring of Seekers. Hmm. Yes, I, I like that. Ring could be nice. It's, it's got a nice ring to it. Huh? I suppose one could say that. I was going to say it's got a hopeful ring to it, but yes, yes. I mean, mine's funny. As as long as it doesn't have the word circle in it, I, I feel like that would be unfortunate. No, no, we're not going to put circle in our group name. That would just be... Does that mean we have to kick Stavik out? Maybe. I see. He'll snap his fingers and the golden glow will fade from the ring. It's a nice trick. Thank you. It's very simple, but... I suppose... I, I did see a lot of pain, but I also saw a lot of hope. A surprising amount. <laughs> Do I not seem very hopeful? <laughs> Don't answer that. If that is your wish, I shall not answer that. No, I... You may. You do seem very hopeful, but a lot of people say things and mean other things. Or they say things, and inside, they feel a different way. And the way that my abilities work... You can't really lie. And so it was just refreshing and I suppose I felt relieved. How so? That the things that you've said, the hope that you've shared, the goals that you have, I suppose I'm just relieved that the inside matches the outside, I suppose, if you could say that. Oh. Thank you. Does that not normally happen? Well, I suppose you can say that I want to make the world a better place and I believe I can make a difference, but then that is a, a form of self-delusion, and on the inside you don't genuinely actually believe that it's possible you just are telling yourself that right yeah i yeah i suppose a lot of people are like that but i i mean it yes and i'm just glad that the light was so strong i suppose despite the negativity that exists you know it's um funny i when I was writing the story of the hero, yes, I kept switching back and forth on if I wanted to say light or star in the beginning. <laughs> mm. And you chose star. I chose star. Mm. I mean, I started with star, but then I, I wasn't sure if the last part would hit as well if it was more surprising that that's how the butterfly saw it, but that's not how the reader saw it. But I, I decided in the end I wanted 
the readers to always think it was a star. Yes. Just like they thought it was a butterfly. Yes. From the beginning. But that's why, um... I drew everything in black and white until the end. Two cloud perceptions. Yes. Hmm. Very clever. And... I think star was the right choice. That's good. I haven't um, submitted it yet, so... I, I made the changes um, that the others recommended uh, with, like, the repeating words and stuff, but... Um, did you think I should change anything? I think that... Regardless of my own personal interpretation of the story or anything like that, I admire the story that I believe that you're trying to tell and the details and it was a very moving experience for me so I wouldn't want it to be changed. I like it the way that it is but if it... I suppose what I would say is if the story wants to be something else then let it but if it is no, good that the way one, it is, then leave it. That one's the way it is. But I think my story of a night maybe just needs to not be, or I need to write something else. Hmm. Unfortunate for Stavik. Yeah, I was kind of using it as a way to get <laughs> information about his daughter from him. Mm-hmm. Which kind of felt dirty a little bit, so... I suppose. Though I feel like we could still use that story to our advantage. Okay. Okay. Especially with the, the brave knight. Tosses his hair back. Um... And... He coughs it to his fist, the princess. Okay. So I would not call her beautiful. I would I would probably use lovely. I feel like she wouldn't appreciate that. Louis stands up and just like starts dusting his knees. So, um, mm-hmm. uh, we, um, mm-hmm. was that all the, the sculpting you wanted to do? do? Would you like to do more sculpting? I'm not very good at it. I'm, I'm more of a, like, wax carving or, like, carving oyster shells, you know? Like, well, then let's paint. Okay. I have a plan for that one, actually. I'm going to make Lady Dupree a gift. Oh, I am concerned. (laughs) You're concerned? (laughs) Yes. It's going to be something she likes, though. It's going to be something she likes. Lorenzo literally told me something she likes. That's something I like, and I know how to paint. Oh, well, that's lovely. What? No, no, I think I just... I just want to temper your expectations, and if you think that Penelope is what you said, a that she, do you believe that Lady Dupree is as well? She's borderline something. Well, in that case, she may not show her appreciation. Oh no, she didn't even accept a butterfly. I'm perfectly excited for whatever heightened emotion she's going to display. Mm. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I don't believe I saw anything there that would necessarily heighten emotion, but I may need some time to process everything that I felt. Okay. Um, uh, Alright. What do we need to do for that? I suppose I just need to reflect on it. Okay. Should I grab you a mirror? Mm, no, I'd rather not look at myself. Why not? Well, I don't really need the mirror since uh, Detlev made me this. 
and he's gonna pull out the eight inch tall statuette and put it on top of the table and then pull himself up and sit in his chair. Yeah, Louis will kind of lean over and look at it. Detlef made this? With the book and the dagger. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and what did he say about that part of the sculpture? Well, I suppose he said you probably heard my conversation with Bro. I don't know what you were talking about. Oh well, well we were talking a lot about this before the. Mm-hmm flirting, as it were. But I suppose he said he wasn't sure whether I should have my hands on my hips, or perhaps be doing some sort of pose, and he wasn't sure if these were the right things, but that it was too late to change it. Um... He also said that that knife was apparently a dagger that was once wielded by the mortal vessel of Owen some time oh, that ago I, that I was believe. lost yeah. to yeah. history. So, uh, fuck, Tatlov, what the fuck? Okay, um, all right. I mean, I'm I'm glad that he made such a. A detailed uh, likeness of me. Yeah, you look great. Whatever. <laughs> he raises an eyebrow. <laughs> sure. I'm just... This just feels like a very strange move. Um... On the chessboard. Um... And you see Louis's eyes are like darting back and forth as he's thinking. He goes to the statue, he goes to like the clay around and he's just kind of mumbling a bunch of nonsense for a little bit. Sanders watches him intently. I would like to make a religion check a little bit on this one. Just Very to see well. if I get anything extra on this. Sure. 18, it was a shitty roll. <laughs> it was a shitty roll. I mean, it was less than half, but, uh, yeah. So, do you, do you think that, you know, these are, at least the, the object that the statue is holding is of some minor religious significance? You can tell that it has little Owen symbols, like, carved into the blade. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um... All right. Could I actually check to see if there's anything I've ever read about a, a dagger of Owen that did anything? Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're welcome to make a, a knowledge religion on this. See what you know about it, since it is a religious artifact of some power. Nice. That is a nat one. <laughs> This appears to be a gap in your knowledge. Mm hmm. That it does. <laughs> that it does. Um, look, I, I don't know what his plan was to show this to you, but we should fix this, I guess. Um, well, I healed up the gap in my flesh, but. I'm not precisely certain how it, he pauses as he's talking. He said that I should let him know if I find it so that he can update the records. <sighs> okay. Let's finish up Luciana quickly so we can Go find that, I guess. Hmm. Um, a vessel of Owen. Uh, okay. Um, 
I can start doing some research, see last known locations of any of the ones that they actually recorded, and uh, I'll go from there. I'll, I'll figure this out, okay? Thank you. I'll, I'll also do research. It's a strange gap in the records. And I'm not sure why it's there. Um, but I didn't even know that this existed. Much less that that was a carving of said artifact. Oh, I guess I just wasn't surprised. I mean, I'm not necessarily surprised that it has significance, but more surprised that it has significance and that I don't know about it. Oh, oh, that you, okay. That's what I'm surprised right, I, I about. I understand. Now. Yes. Um, okay, well, so here's the thing. Yes. There are plenty of artifacts around the world, I believe, just uh, based on the deities. Some are broken, actually, and some have been destroyed. Um, I'm, I'm really not surprised that this exists, though. I don't actually know why. It's more like a gut feeling. Um, but, um... Well, the likeness of it certainly did a lot of damage, so I'm sure that if it still exists, it would be very potent, perhaps. Uh, do you have your star still there? Um, no. What happened? Did it take it? Um, I suppose... When I healed it, everything was just fresh. Okay. W was it a scar? The star? Yes. I... Su I... Didn't really consider it a scar, but I suppose... Oh. It happened after I was stabbed, so... Okay, but like... Did you put it there originally? Well, that's a tough question. I suppose I was in the process of being pierced through one side and out the other and very, very much engrossed in that moment. And uh oh, a different time than the dagger time. Oh, oh, you're you're talking about the star. The, the star was there the first time that I was stabbed through the chest. Okay. The the dagger that did not create the star there. I, I know. I was just curious about if you put the star there originally or not. That's that's what I was asking. Well, I suppose the answer is. Probably. Probably? Well, I can't say for certain. Oh. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, if you can say eventually, I would like to know. Sure. For certain. <laughs> I suppose the most accurate answer is probably yes and no. Hmm. Confusing, but I appreciate it. Hmm. Well. Yes, the book is also concerning, especially given that I can't read it. Yeah, I was actually surprised by that, especially if you are a librarian as well. Yes, that book would also be one of my specialties. Why is that? Because it's dangerous. Your specialty is dangerous books? Mm, not necessarily. But... Your specialty is danger? Yes. <laughs> you could say that my specialty is danger, in mm. fact. Well, lucky you. We are in the middle of a bunch of fucking dangers, Ander. Yes, and unfortunately my specialty is not coming in handy as much as I thought it would. Seems more so to be backfiring at you. A lot of things seem to be backfiring lately. 
Um, I'm gonna work on my attitude. Um, oh. Well, I, I was mean to you earlier this evening, and I'm I'm sorry, and I. I normally do that because um, it's like a, a, a way to see if people will get mean back and if they'll do anything. Um, and you didn't, obviously, and um, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, I see. Well, I can assure you, though, I'm not sure that it means much to you, but I will not get mean back. So if that is a test, I am fairly certain that I will pass it. Thank you. You're um, welcome. But it's a, it's kind of a habit thing, so I, I really don't want to be mean to you, anyways. I just, it sometimes it just, it just comes out. I understand. But I, I want to be better, so I, I just, um, I'm gonna work on it. But if you notice me doing that. Please just let me know, and I'll um, try to recenter. Sure. Should we have a code word or something? Okay. Um, like what? Hmm. That's a good question. It can't be captain or first mate because we already do yes. that as like a familiarity thing. Maybe, maybe a gesture. A gesture. Okay. Maybe. And that way, no one else would. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. I guess you'd be making it, so... Probably. What do you think is a gesture you wouldn't normally do? Hmm... I wouldn't normally do, but also nothing that I... wouldn't ever do, because then it might be very strange. Yes, exactly. It's It has to be somewhere in the middle. Uh, he's gonna look at the ring around the ball. And he's just gonna just do, do a little do a little loop with his finger. Okay. I can do that. I think it feels thematic and symbolic <laughs> enough, so <laughs> perhaps with sympathetic magic it will help in some way. Okay. Um Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Um. Yes. I. I would like to call you my friend. I'm going to repeat something that Detlef said to me. Yes. Though I don't know that I can quite match his energy and intonation. <laughs> you don't <laughs> have to. Well, thanks, but I kind of thought we were already friends. End quote. I just... Um... I'm not the best at uh, people, as I feel as though I've said before, but... Um, with the minor number that I have of people that I care for and care for me in return, which is um, not often, uh, I just... I would like to think that um, I, I trust you and stuff. Oh. It's just odd. Uh, it's hard, I guess. Thank you. Well, I trust you too, and I would not have shared the things that I've shared tonight if I didn't. Especially the things related to the library. I'm going to see it. Okay, well if you've said so, then it must be so. Yep. I have put it into motion. You've put it into motion? Mm-hmm. Well, 
then it's only a matter of time. And Louis uh, starts uh, moving around to get the room ready for painting. Do you know what you will be painting? You didn't answer about if you needed a still life or not. Oh, I think for painting, I was going to make a bird with a hat for Isabella. It's a choice. I mean, she seems so fond of them. She really does. Um, I'm glad I didn't mess up that conversation at the opera, so... Yeah. She seems to have recovered from whatever that was. She was talking differently. Hmm. Her energy seemed different, is what I should say. I can understand that. Yes, perhaps. So, uh, I don't know if she is recovered. Maybe on the surface, but you never know what's underneath. Well, he is going to kind of point at his eyes. I suppose it depends. I guess it depends. I suppose you do now. And and you, when you pierce the souls of mortal men, see all layers here, at once. Here, let me try. Okay. Oh. Well, I suppose that means that I must be mortal then. I will say, but is Xander's heart pierced? Does he bleed to death? <laughs> Do I need to roll up my new character, Beardy? No. Okay. I suppose then I am immortal. I- immortal or mortal? I'm sorry. I immortal. Uh, immortal. My, my, my heart seems to be um, not pierced, and I would know because I've had it pierced before, so. Yeah, that sounds unpleasant. I... I recovered. Don't think mine has been yet. Oh. But I've been pierced in other ways, so... (laughs) Hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. So, um... You don't wear any rings, I noticed. I do not wear any rings. Mm Mm-hmm. And Louis will start setting out the paints pretty much and the paintbrushes and the canvases um but you do wear earrings i do wear earrings is 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 this about me being unmarried Uh, no actually i i was just kind of talking oh sorry oh no that's fine i was just curious i did it wrong i'm sorry no you didn't i was just curious um the last time you mentioned me not wearing a ring it was in reference to that, so uh, I was. It was just a callback. Well, um, have you ever had any of your jewelry like stuck to you and you couldn't get it off, like for some reason? Stuck to me, as in by force, by some sort of glue or adhesive. <laughs> Just stuck. We'll just say stuck. You couldn't get it off for some reason. And Louis sits down and takes out a larger brush and starts to paint a background on his canvas. Xander will take a another brush and he'll dip it into some black paint and he will begin painting as well. Um, he considers the question... I don't believe that I've ever had jewelry stuck to me, as it were, no. Okay. Do you know if you would... Pull it out? What? Uh, Yeah, would you you try to do that or try to um, take off the part that it is stuck to, even? I suppose if I didn't like the jewelry very much, Mm. then that's something that I might do. Okay. Why? And Louis sets down the paintbrush and he takes off his left glove. And he shows his hand and his hand is um, from like, his knuckles down is pretty much completely burned. Mm Mm-hmm. And you see there is a ring finger on, or a ring on his ring finger, and the metal is fused to his skin. 
And he just wiggles it. Oh. So, uh, I don't know um, if it's a good idea to do anything, because it hasn't, like, gotten infected. Um, and he puts his glove back on. Can I examine it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like what I use for, like, some spell stuff. Um, but yeah. And he just holds his hand forward. Uh, I would like to just carefully take his hand and look at the ring, the area. I'd like to do a heel check on this poor boy. Yeah, please, go for it. Okay. Um... My goodness. Uh, yeah. Is a 20? Xander, you take a look at the finger, and it definitely looks like this is an older wound. It, it's fully scarred over. It's mm-hmm. healed as much as it's it's going to naturally. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the the metal band is uh, is fused to the skin. So, in order to remove this, you would have to cut away all the scar tissue. Uh, so, like, you could probably perform some sort of surgery to remove this, but it would be uh, it would be difficult and painful. Louis. Okay. But yeah, How? The, it, it's not infected or anything. It does it, but yeah, it does. It definitely looks like it's it's probably at this point, you know, uh, fully healed naturally. Okay. Is the metal of the ring damaged in any way, or is it in perfect condition? Uh, I believe it'd be in good condition. I don't think that. I'm not 100% sure on the melting point of gold, but I'm pretty sure that it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Can I he... mean, like, it has, like, the natural amount of scratches that you would if you have, like, a ring on your hand and mm-hmm. you, like, hit your hand mm-hmm. sometimes. Sure. Like, it has scuffs mm-hmm. as it would naturally. It doesn't look like it's been polished since it uh got fused there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it just kind of... It's just a simple gold band. Mm-hmm. Is... How was it stuck to your... Oh, well, uh, my hand was put into a fire. Hmm. I had a feeling that you were going to say that, but I wanted to double check. No, nothing magical or anything, just, um, a lesson, I would say. Hmm. Did you learn it? For a while, I guess. Uh, and then I chose not to listen anymore. Good. May I have my hand back? Uh, if you would like your hand back, yes. you can have it. And he'll put the glove back on. If you would ever like that to be removed at some point, just let me know and I'll think about what I can do. Okay. Um, you did notice a lot of like cuts near yeah. under it. Yeah. I <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I don't really know the solution. I'm kind of a wimp and didn't feel like cutting off my finger. So oh, um, I would not recommend that as the first solution. It's it's kind of my last one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well. Uh, a simple surgery could be performed to remove it. It might be painful without some sort of anesthetic, but that could be prepared. Or magic could potentially be used. Well, I guess since I can have magic used on me, maybe eventually. Yeah. Um, no rush, of course. Just thought I would offer. Yeah. And he picks up his brush again and starts painting again. Xander will continue painting as well. Yep. Uh, sorry if that was a really weird question or thing. No, not particularly. I had a feeling you were alluding to something that was very personal. Well, like I said, I would like to trust you, so I just, um. Appreciate it. Um, but yeah, there's just, um, little bits of things like that, 
Um, yeah. Yeah. But um, in doing so, I, I also hope you wouldn't mind sharing some stuff about you. All right. I'll share some stuff with you. Your story touched me very deeply. Not only because it was beautifully written, but also because it felt personal, mm -hmm. I suppose. Yeah. Okay. It was almost as if had I not known that you had written it, I might think it was a story about things that I have experienced before. What? Do you mind if I ask what those were? No. I don't mind, but... Are you able to share? I'm able to share it to some degree, and I told you about the time I was betrayed. Yes. It's been more than once, but I was essentially struck from behind by someone I had tried to show mercy to and grievously injured mm -hmm. and hearing that made me think of that and I suppose I also thought about the fact that the hero not the one from your story but the one that I've alluded to mm -hmm. is not a butterfly it's not a butterfly? no so then the alternative is a moth yes is that why you were upset with me? Upset? When I said I... Um... Changed my magic in front of Isabella. I wouldn't necessarily use the word upset to describe how I felt in that moment. Though perhaps... Perhaps I could have been upset. I don't think I was upset at you. Mm -hmm. I feel like I was concerned about the implications. Okay. I was mostly confused based on the context of the interaction and the clarification that you had provided later on that I did not have at the beginning that you were <laughs> trying to make a butterfly and created a moth. It just seemed as if you had created something and it was a moth and therefore that was bad and it had to be destroyed and that seemed fascinating given the context of the story Louis is very grateful there is a canvas in front of him currently <laughs> uh well I might have destroyed the moth because it was a moth though. Well, yes, that's very clear. Okay. Cool. Um. Why? I'm not mad at you, just to be clear. <laughs> you just want to know why? I'm curious. Uh. Okay, um. It's just, uh. It... 
I, I feel like if I say this, like, all, all the words are not nice. Well, I suppose you should say them anyways. You said those words about Penelope, so... Yeah, but I hate Penelope. Well, do you hate moths? And if so, why? Um... I, I, I feel like the symbolism for everything, it, it was just, um... It's just wrong. I see. When compared to the butterfly. Yeah. Is there any tangible reason that it's wrong, other than the fact that it's just not a butterfly and it thinks that it should be a butterfly? Or wants to be a butterfly, or believes that it is a butterfly but somehow was not made right? Um... No, I, I don't... I don't think there's anything more than just that, I guess. I suppose my follow-up question to that would be, does it have this belief... Is this like an intrinsic belief that it has always had since the very beginning moments of its existence, or is it something that it has learned from its interactions with the world outside? I, um... Louis just looks confused by the question, but keeps painting. Uh, first, one just quick question. Yes. Um, night or sunset? Twilight. Got it. Um, <laughs> you see him dot like a different color paint on his paintbrush. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Um, I guess... It, uh, probably since its existence. Since its existence. I guess, yeah. Okay. That makes sense to me. So since the beginning, it's always had this sense that it's not as it should be. Yes. I see. Okay. Um... And then, uh, was, is there anything else about that? No, it's just curious to me. Louis's head just pokes out from his canvas to look at Xander, or see if he can see Xander. Xander will poke his head out once he stops hearing brush strokes. What do you mean? I'm just thinking about the story in the context of this information, and I suppose I'm thinking about the hero, not the other hero, and... Oh, uh, which, which hero is the hero? I suppose the... I'm thinking about both heroes, actually. <laughs> I think you should have a better uh, way of describing them, if anything, if you're going to be talking about them in the same sentence. Well, I suppose I would say... I'm talking about my friend, but that doesn't work now either. <laughs> okay. Um, so... What does that mean to you, I guess? What does what mean to me? Oh, I don't know anymore. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> and, and Louis will just slide back you... onto his... What? You told me that the story wouldn't have to exist if the moth had been a butterfly to begin with. Uh, yeah. Probably. Hopefully. Yes. I think that that is likely the case. Okay. And it sort of reminded me of your story of the pearl as well. You said that people tend to take own control things that they find beautiful 
after we had had a discussion of how sometimes things that have experienced or been related to pain can still be quite lovely. Okay. And so I suppose what I'm saying is it is unfortunate that if only the moth had been a butterfly to begin with, the story wouldn't have had to exist. But the flame would have never found the moth. The forest would never have been rid of the snakes. The danger would never have been taken care of and there would no there would be no hero if not for the moth being the way it was. So even though you say the moth was wrong, and even though what it went through is difficult and painful and it shouldn't have had to the world is better with the hero in it than the hero having been born something else because the hero wouldn't have been the hero if he was born a butterfly he would have been something else and that thing would have been good too but it wouldn't be the hero is what I'm thinking and he'll dip his head back and continue painting Louis is just quiet for a while and then keeps painting what was your childhood like if you know I'm afraid I can't answer that question Okay. Um, maybe it's harder for me to ask questions about this because I don't know what you can say. My earliest memories... Well, I suppose that's not true. My earliest memories were of... being in the dark. For a long time, I couldn't see, and when I could, I couldn't move. Okay. Some of my first memories were of being bedridden. For a long time, I was paralyzed. I would say. I could not even muster the strength to move my head. I had to be taken care of. I couldn't even speak. Um. Okay. Because of that, I did not have many opportunities to interact with others aside from my caretaker. Who was your caretaker? very kind woman. She had lots of responsibilities. She was very important and lots of people depended on her. She had many duties that had to be done daily and lots of people vied for her time and her attention and her affection 
she didn't really have the time to be spending so much of it taking care of me, yet she would not allow anyone else to do something like that. She wouldn't delegate, so she chose to take care of me herself. She washed over me, she brushed my hair, made sure that I was healthy, told me stories. She knew that it was a sacrifice to do so, and yet she still chose to. Did you like her? I loved her. Okay. I'm glad then. Yes. After all, she was the entire world. For a boy, a man, a person, a Xander, stuck in a room. Well, are you happier being out and about? I'm happy that I've been able to meet so many people. I'm happy that I have been able to help some people that are suffering. I'm happy to have learned a little more about the world that I had only heard about through stories and in my role. It's one thing to know things and another thing to experience them firsthand. Hmm. I agree. Very much so in that. And Louis will pause for a moment, or, or at least his brush pauses, and he'll switch hands for a moment, and he'll start painting with his right hand. Okay. So, if that's your first memory, do you consider any of your memories being best memories? Or do you have a best memory, I should ask? Yes. I do. I suppose there are two memories that compete for best in my mind, but I suppose they're very similar. My favorite memory is probably of being in the embrace of my first ever friend. <laughs> And the other? It was similar. Hmm. The first time I realized just how deeply my affection for him ran. <laughs> this is the first time I said his name and it meant more than it had all the times before those are lovely memories yes I hold them very dear to my heart I'm a little jealous oh 
Just to be able to feel that strongly. Mm. It sounds really, really lovely. Shit. And you just see the paintbrush drop and, like, roll on the ground. All right. And he gets up and he picks it up with his left hand and sits back down. I'm sorry that you have to feel that way, Louis. Why? Because I want you to be able to experience feelings that deep of a positive nature as well. (laughs) I mean, I'm sure it'll happen eventually. I just, um... I don't, I don't know. I think, to be honest, it's it's more scary to think that I'll, I'll feel it and I just don't actually know that's what it is. And then I, I miss something and that sort of opportunity um, just seems terrifying to me, you know? I see. Well, what I will say from my experience is that, as the saying goes, one door closes and another one opens. I think that people are often worried about missing opportunities thinking so far in the future that they miss out on the opportunities that are around them as it were and you shouldn't worry so much about that because even if by some chance you do manage to miss the signs I'm sure there will be another opportunity because One thing that I do know from looking into your soul is that you are a very, very good person, Louis. And I want to help make a world in which good things happen to people and in which good people like you don't have to suffer as much. So in that world, there will be plenty of opportunities. Okay. No, that's a dumb question. No. Um, Ask it. Do you miss him? I see, it was dumb because I should already know that answer, probably. What is the answer? I was gonna guess yes. Hmm. I suppose the answer is complicated. To miss someone implies that they are gone. Okay. But I believe that in some ways people are never truly gone. And the memories that I have of him, they remain with me. And it's like he's still with me, always. If you remember when we talked about stars, I said that stars were in some way like love even after they've already died out their light still manages to reach you as if they're ghosts or memories that still linger to show that you are still cared for and so in that way yes I do miss him more than anything and no because he's not gone as long as I remember him and it doesn't matter because he'll always be alive in those memories hmm Thank you for sharing. I feel as though sometimes the questions I ask are not um, easy. Uh, They sometimes just kind of come out of my mouth. So um, thank you for sharing. Mm. You're welcome. 
I don't think I've ever spoken of that to anyone. I'll keep it safe. Thank you, Louis. It means a lot to me. <sighs> Why do you like Twilight? I suppose I like Twilight because there's something liminal about it, something in between. It's a point that one might say is ambiguous. Is it light? Is it dark? No, it's its a own thing. Somewhere in between, refusing to be defined by one or the other, it's if you think about it, such a transient moment, right? It's just the boundary of those other two, and yet there's something almost eternal about it, if that makes sense. Eternal because it is transient. It's a moment of endless possibilities that's gone before you can even fathom all of those possibilities, only to come again for a very short moment. But perhaps because it is so momentary, I think it's beautiful. The day is gorgeous. The night can be beautiful too. But we experience those for such a long period every day. But twilight, that perfect moment, I suppose it just makes me feel strongly. Louis will turn his painting around. Um, and what you see is a ship, uh, a sailboat specifically, on the ocean, and behind it is a sky of twilight. You can see a covered up, like, overpainted area under one of the stars, though. Mm -hmm. uh, after the paintbrush slipped, there was a slight defect in how he painted that area. Sure. Xander watches it in silence for quite some time, actually, just taking in all of the details, but he's smiling and his eyes are half-lidded as normal, the crinkling at the corners, and he looks to be deep in thought as he just takes in this painting. It's lovely, Louis. Thank you, Xander. I feel kind of bad that I'm giving it away to someone else now. It's okay. Even if I can't have things of my own, just being able to witness or to hold them in my hands for a single moment. That is good for me. And I suppose that's why I like Twilight too. Louis stands up and holding the canvas, he holds it out to Xander. Xander will smile and reach out and very gently, as if he is holding something that might shatter if he squeezes too tight, will take the canvas. Thank you, Louis. And he'll kind of close his eyes as if he's still looking at the painting after his vision has gone completely black. And then he'll nod to himself once and hand it back to Louis. Louis will take it and place it on the table. And then he will take his chair and scoot it next to Xander's, not behind so that he's not looking at his painting yet, mm -hmm. and he'll sit next to him. Okay. Xander will reach for his canvas and he will turn it to face Louis. And what 
uh, he will see is a very stylistic painting, mostly done in blacks that are actually dark purples and dark blues, some browns in there. And it's a painting of what appears to be a raven. Mm -hmm. A raven wearing a sun hat. Hmm. And Mm -hmm. in the background, there is a blood moon and a mountain range in the distance. (laughs) The blood moon has caused interesting shadows in the background splaying over the mountain. One section of the mountain appears to be somewhat deformed or warped compared to the rest of it. And there's a set of trees kind of lining the base of the mountain. And they seem to be leaning away uh, from the mountain as if they are uh, kind of being pulled in that direction or maybe even running away. It's very well painted, but it's kind of scary. <laughs> hmm. Perhaps. Somewhat derivative. Somewhat derivative. Mm-hmm. Louis will scoot his chair a bit more so it's more next to Xander's. I like um, that the beak is correct, though. Mm. Yes. That was very, very important, at least. I mean, it's, it's a huge distinction between ravens and crows. Crows. Yeah. Yes. You're a very good artist. Thank you. I have some experience. Mm. And really good teachers, I suppose. Good or good? It depends on the teacher. I imagine. I wanted it to be striking, at least. Oh, it's definitely striking. Uh, Before you said Twilight, I was thinking about having it so that the sun was just red, and mostly you just saw the shadows of the ship, but um, I liked the Twilight better. Besides, it's more like the colors I like anyways. Mm, That makes sense. And he's going to dip his hand, or his, he's going to dip his, actually, he will dip his finger. He'll dip his finger into the red paint, and he is going to add a little bit of rim light around the back of the bird and the hat to just accentuate it and make it a little more striking. Looks like it might hit me at this point. Mm. Well, I'm not sure if it's a man Mm. or not, or if it is mortal. But if it does, you could pierce it back. So I suppose if it was a man, I could pierce its soul. Yes. Yeah. Well. Hopefully, Isabella likes it, and it's not too scary. To She'll her. probably like it. She. She's a nice gal. She's very sweet. What are you thinking? I'm just thinking about all of the information that we've gained so far and how little I know and how unusual a feeling that is, I suppose. (laughs) Not that I know a lot about a lot of things necessarily. (laughs) But it is strange for one in a position such as myself to not know sitting yes it is very very strange Hmm. for a librarian to be sitting when there are books to attend to i suppose yeah but yes i suppose it would be like someone asking you a question about a story of a hero just a very basic question, like, what was the identity of the being that the hero encountered? 
at the beginning mm-hmm. of the story and you being unable to even process the question no clue mm-hmm. like you should know the answer the answer is very obvious right there you wrote the story even and yet it's not there I mean technically that is a complicated question because you did say at the beginning of the story I did say at the beginning of the story and I would I would have to consider all the factors of do I count like what it actually is at the end or do I just say what it is at the beginning or at least the perception of the reader and the butterfly or moth or Mm. hero or whatever I suppose in this hypothetical that I was creating it was more as if you were having some sort of press release for the (laughs) publication of your book you Mm -hmm. know number one you know Burgos Times bestseller don't make it a Burgos number one Uh, Adrian you know okay Adrian's number one bestseller (laughs) story of a hero and you're at this press conference for Mm -hmm. some reason and they're asking you all these questions and one of them said so Mr. Freeman I unfortunately was not able to get a copy of the story ahead of said conference because it was sold out across Adrian, and I could not actually get a copy from the uh-huh. publisher. Okay. Um, and the library seemed to be out of copies for yeah. some reason. Could you tell me a little bit about the story? I understand that there's apparently uh, a butterfly in the story, and he, he meets uh, a friend. Like, what... I'm trying to write a synopsis for this mm. press release and I just don't have all the details. What what did he mean? <laughs> it's so hard. That's a lot. Yes. Or could you even give me a synopsis of the story? I probably could, but that might even just spoil the whole thing. I mean, I... That, that would spoil the thing. But imagine if okay. you went to open your mouth mm-hmm. and suddenly you realized you did not know. Okay. And not even as if you had forgotten, but the information just wasn't there. And you should know this. Yes. But for some reason you don't. Hmm. And then one of the other people came up to you and said, but you're an expert on the story. You read the story. You wrote the story. Yeah. You rewrote the story many times. (laughs) Shouldn't you know the answer? It feels like that sometimes. I see sounds complicated perhaps maybe that's the special power of the the dagger it saps information from you and and louis just reaches and just touches the side of xander's arm we'll figure it out we'll fix this okay yes we will it's just a matter of one. Yes. Well, I'm hoping not too long so that... Yes, yes, yeah, soon. Sooner. Yes. Please. Yes. Mm. What's up? Nothing. Just looking at you. Uh, what do you see? I see a captain (laughs) who is a good person Mm. and who has very strong feelings about Penelope, the actress. Yeah. Yes. Well, as an actress, I'm sure she's fine, whatever. Yes. I I think she did a fairly good job at concealing her disagreeable personality. Yes, while playing (laughs) Prenia. Perhaps she's a genius actress, actually. Hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. It's just, um... You know, she she didn't even try to hide her nature, though. She didn't. I can at least give kudos to that, as I feel as though a smarter person would try to hide how terrible they were. 
<laughs> Especially Perhaps. in front of their peers. I suppose, but I imagine her peers are all like that too. Ugh. Or else they likely wouldn't put up with that. I would hope not. But sometimes you get stuck in bad situations where you kind of have to. That is true. That is true. In that case, I hope they are rid of her soon. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, w- Mm-hmm. Well, uh, it sounded a little ominous when you said that. Did it? A little bit. Oh. I suppose it could be interpreted that way. Though she is... not a health elf. True, she's a full elf. She should be fine. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. Uh, I hope that her friends do not have to deal with her anymore if she is terrorizing them. Yes, I agree wholeheartedly. I also think that we should perhaps tell the Copper Brotherhood that we are concerned for her safety, given the events and given that she'd already had one experience with the killer, and they should perhaps send a detail to watch over her. (laughs) Perhaps a little bit of surveillance for her safety may be (laughs) helpful for her continued survival Mm -hmm. and may have an additional benefit of making her realize some things. Yeah. You're kind of tricksy. Mm. Am I? A little bit. I see. I think that things can have many purposes, and... That's pretty tricksy. I suppose so. I suppose so. Well, she did... I suppose. <laughs> she did say some pretty rude things to a friend. And she is getting in the way of our investigation. That so. is true. We'll figure it out. We will. Um, if you ever do want to paint again, um, can I ask a favor? Sure. What is... Can I paint you? Um, would these be the cobalt and cadmium sort of paints (laughs) that you were worried about me consuming? Probably. Why? Oh, I'm just thinking that if you were to coat my body in paint. Oh, no, Xander, I don't mean I'm going to paint, like, on you. Uh, No, not on you. No. I see. No. No, I I wouldn't hurt you that way. I would probably be fine. Okay. He's going to say as he, like, rubs his fingers a little bit and then, like, absently licks one of them. You really gotta not do that, bud. Oh, sorry. It's just a habit, I suppose. Stop that. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, no, I just, I just meant, would you mind being like, like my the subject still of your life? Painting. Yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah. I will do that. I'm very good at standing still. I know. And sitting still and lying still, especially. I don't want you to lie down. Oh, okay. Well, actually, it would be more painful not to. Well, I would want you to be in a pose that seems the most natural to you, actually. I see. Well, I will find a natural pose and assume it and not move. <laughs> okay. That sounds good. But speaking of practice, mm, Detlove gave me a little bit of an assignment. That's perhaps the wrong word to use. Okay. Um, mm, Normally I get assignments. <laughs> I, I imagine you do. This is a little bit of a different assignment than you would be given, I imagine. Yeah. Uh, I should probably, at some point tonight, uh, spend some time figuring it out. Oh. Um, alone. I think it would probably be for the best. Okay. Yeah. Not a problem. Um, yeah. You go do that whenever, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is there anything else you would like to talk about or do before I do that? Oh, no. 
I, I don't have anything. Are you sure? I think so. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> uh, sorry, I panicked with the question. Oh, no, that's that's all right. I, I don't think I have anything else. I was just enjoying company, I guess. Mm. But um, your work is important, and I do not wish to be in the way of you. I see. Well, I don't think that you're in the way, but if that's the case, then I will go reflect on this assignment. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Um, if I don't see you before the morning, then have a good rest of your night. Uh, yeah. I don't want to write. <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird to say. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do for the rest of the night. Perhaps you can draw out your ideas instead of writing them. Maybe. I'll bounce some ideas off of you another time, okay? Sure. That sounds good. Okay. And he stares at the crumpled paper that he flew through onto the floor. <laughs> Yeah, I'll figure it out. Okay, well, I am here if you need anything. Okay. Okay. What should we do tomorrow night? Uh, if you want to do anything tomorrow night. Well. Sorry, it's been two nights in a row, and I just. Oh, that's. Uh, yeah. Um. Well, if I shouldn't I'm, make assumptions. If I'm not busy seducing Detlev or. Valentino or Bro or perhaps seducing them all at the same time or any new paramour that I have set my sights on uh, perhaps perhaps Lorenzo Dupree given that he seems to be potentially amenable to folk of my sort if I'm not busy engaged in all sorts of acts that cannot be described oh my God. in front of you, Louis. Uh, sure. We can figure out something to do. Maybe some more art, or I can help you talk about a story, or perhaps we'll be completely busy taking care of said killer. Mm-hmm. Is everything alright? Yeah, it's great. Okay. Good to know. Also, you're definitely wrong about what you said before. I most certainly don't flirt with everyone. I have not at any point flirted with you, Louis. Oh, I know. Are you not people? Oh, uh, probably. Probably in the sense of the quay, the <laughs> yes to the negative question is. <laughs> Or I, I think I'm probably a person. I'm pretty sure I'm a person. You're a person. <laughs> I got that at least from my, okay. my read. Good, good, good. good well, know. yes. In that case, I will catch you later. Yeah. Have a good evening. You too. And Xander will stand up and he will reach behind him into his pouch, and you'll pull out a single marigold. This is not flirting, to be clear, since mm. the last time I gave someone a flower, it was, okay. and we made an I entire mean, it's situation good to understand about this, that. Yes. yes, but here. Thank you. You said that they can have a lot of meanings, and so I'm inventing a new meaning. This meaning of handing over a marigold it is, may the waters be still on our journey, Captain. <laughs> Thank you, first mate. Hmm. And he um, just kind of holds it to himself for a little bit. Have a good night, Sander. You too, Louis. He'll say, and he will head to the door. And once he does, he'll open it, turn back, give Louis a little smile, and then he will leave and 
go about his task. Okay. Um, Louis will put the flower somewhere safe. You got it. You place the flower somewhere safe and reflect on your evening and I feel like that's a, a good enough place as any to call it a session. Agreed. Sounds good. All right. Thanks everybody for joining. Thank you.